Imagine taking 486,500 micrograms T3 if you're a 100 kilogram bodybuilder. You would melt on the spot and go fully nuclear like in Akira. But hey, scientific evidence is scientific evidence. And unfortunately, there's not so many studies comparing sobiterone to triiodothyronine directly. So let's continue to the results and see what happened to these unfortunate female Wister rats. Sobiterol might protect against cholestatic liver disease and biliary injury, stemming from an animal model using multi-drug resistant two deficient MDR2 deficient mice. And these effects were observed at five milligrams per one kilogram of food consumed at libitum daily for four weeks. Converting that to the human equivalent dose would be 0 0.93 micrograms for one kilogram of body weight orally daily, or 93 micrograms for 100 kilogram body butter, which is a very reasonable dose. Uh, for your information, thyroid receptor beta expression is decreased in multi-drug resistance to deficient mice, resulting in blunted response to sobiterome. Sobiterome reverses and prevents liver fat accumulation in a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease model without significantly altering heart rate. This is stemming from an animal model using rats on a choline and methionine deficient diet. And these effects were observed at five milligrams per one kilogram of food consumed at libitum daily for two weeks. Converting that to the human equivalent dose gives you 4.95 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight daily. Again, for humans, 495 micrograms if you're 100 kilogram bodybuilder. And for this experiment, they used male fisher rats with an average body weight of 112.5 grams. They consumed 6.1 grams of food daily on average, giving you 30.5 micrograms sobiterome, giving us a human equivalent dose of 4.95 micrograms for one kilogram of body weight. Sobiterome restores myelation in Pitt Hopkins syndrome. It overcomes human transcription factor four gene mutations by decreasing oligodendrocyte progenitor cells by approximately 25 to 33%. And Sobiterome increased pre-myelating oligodendrocytes by approximately 50 to 180%, stemming from an animal model using Pitt Hopkins syndrome TCF4 mutant mice. Man, what a mouthful. This study showed that sobiterone was effective at normalizing hyperlocomotion and anxiety phenotypes. And these beneficial effects were observed at 49.3 micrograms sobiterone orally daily for two weeks, which converts into a human equivalent dose of 78.1 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight. And these beneficial effects were also observed using one milligram sub AM2, which is an amide pro drug of sobiterone per one kilogram of body weight by interperitoneal injection daily for 14 days. So different drugs, uh, different administration routes, albeit the same duration of this treatment showing a very comparable effects. Sobiterone prevents fat accumulation and reduces fat mass by 15% to 23%, reduces retroperitoneal fat pads by 48%, it increases oxygen consumption by 46 to 88%, doesn't affect serum triiodothyronine T3 levels, lean muscle mass and cardiac tissue or food intake stemming from an animal model using rats. And all of these beneficial effects were observed at 15 micrograms to 30 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight orally daily for six weeks, as well as at 4.7 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight, albeit through intraperitoneal injection that's into the abdomen daily, also for six weeks. So if we take the oral dosages that would convert in a human equivalent dose between 0.24 micrograms to 0.49 micrograms per one kilogram of body weight. And if you convert that to a 100 kilogram bodybuilder, that's anywhere between 24 micrograms sobiterome up to 49 micrograms sobiterome. Again, dosages which are not unheard of. Sobiterome could offer a potential treatment of atherosclerosis, obesity, and type 2 diabetes mellitus by reducing serum total cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, and LDL levels, albeit that we want to keep our HDL levels somewhat in range. Sobiterome reduces liver fat content. Sobiterome increases bowel acid secretion and whole body oxygen consumption without altering resting heart rate. And this is a meta-analysis of all the animal models using mice and rats. Since sobiterome is a synthetic thyromimetic, I feel it's only fair to compare sobiterome to triiodothyronine directly and see what we can expect when the same dose or half the dose, the molar equivalent dose of T3 is replaced or compared to GC1.
Unfortunately, it seems that this direct comparison has never been made in human subjects, but there's still three animal models I want to highlight, which did exactly that. There's a few more studies which compare GC1 to T3. I've linked them down below in the citation section in case you're interested. The study investigating fetal development in hypothyroid pregnant rats being treated with either GC1 or T3 is well interesting. First study we're going to discuss, performed by Vilechev et al., published in April 2007, titled Thyroid Hormone Receptor Beta-Specific Agonist GC1, aka Sobiterome, Increases Energy Expenditure and Prevents Fat Mass Accumulation in Rats. In this study, the researchers compared T3 to GC1 at similar concentrations based on their molecular mass to ensure a molecule-for-molecule comparison, not a milligram for milligram comparison. For the experiments, female Worcester rats were used. They compared 3 milligrams T3 per 100 grams of body weight versus 1.5 milligrams GC1 per 100 grams of body weight by interpertonal injection daily for six consecutive weeks, as well as double these dosages at 6 milligrams T3 versus 3 milligrams GC1 per 100 grams of body weight. And I know what you're thinking, hey, that's milligrams, not micrograms. And yes, that's right. You heard that correctly. That's between 30 milligrams to 60 milligrams T3 versus directly compared to 15 milligrams to 30 milligrams GC1 per one kilogram of body weight in this animal model. And at the lowest dose, that would be 486.5 milligrams T3 versus 243.2 milligrams GC1 for a 100 kilogram bodybuilder when you convert that animal dose to the human equivalent dose. Imagine taking 486,500 micrograms T3 if you're a 100 kilogram bodybuilder. You would melt on the spot and go fully nuclear like in Akira. But hey, scientific evidence is scientific evidence. And unfortunately, there's not so many studies comparing Sobiterome to triiodothyronine directly. So let's continue to the results and see what happened to these unfortunate female Wister rats. By the way, it reduced by approximately 10% after 10 days in the T3 groups, but weight restored by the end of treatment as T3 increased food intake by 50 to 72%. I mean, if you take that much T3, of course, you're going to be hungry. GC1 treatment had no effect on body weight or food intake. Comparing molecule for molecule, the molar equivalent dosages, GC1 increased oxygen consumption significantly more than T3, an increase of approximately 46 to 88% compared to the control groups, whereas T3 increased it by approximately 44 to 46%, proving that GC1 has a dose-dependent effect on oxygen consumption, whereas T3 does not. While the female Worcester rats in the T3 group showed fat loss of approximately 74 to 91%, all while being on a high-fat diet and while increasing food intake during this 10 days of T3 treatment, these results were less pronounced in the GC1 groups, which gained only 21% body fat in the low-dose groups, so the low-dose group actually gained body fat, and the high-dose group lost 20% body fat, which is still significant as the control group on a high-fat diet gained 83% body fat. Holy moly. Wet and dry mass of the quadriceps, gastrocnemius, and soleus was reduced by 13-36% to 36 in the low-dose and high-dose T3 groups. Soleus wet and dry mass was also reduced in the low-dose GC1 group, while the quadriceps wet mass increased by 15% in the low-dose GC1 group, which is attributed to an increase in water retention. It decreased, the quadricep wet mass decreased by 16% in the high-dose GC1 group, and gastrocnemius wet and dry mass stayed approximately the same in both GC1 groups. Heart size increased in a dose-dependent fashion in the T3 groups, no surprise there, by 33 to 46% compared to the control groups. And the researchers highlighted that GC1 had no effect on heart size, but we'll discuss that a little bit more at length when we get to a study discussing organ tissue distribution comparing GC1 to T3 directly. In the discussion, the researchers specifically mentioned that GC1 increases oxygen consumption by 53 to 90%. Still, the increase in oxygen consumption is not accompanied by an increase in food intake. So you get an increase in metabolic rate, but not an increase in hunger. So that's very promising. GC1 doesn't affect skeletal muscle mass and GC1 reduced fat gain during a high fat diet. Again, this is all very promising, albeit highly impractical because the investigated dosage ranges are far, 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 far beyond, like into the thousand fold range of what we would generally recommend for humans to consume when extrapolating the animal dose to the human equivalent dose. 
So with that being said, let's move over to the next study performed by Johansson et al., published on July 1st, 2005, titled Selective Thyroid Receptor Modulation by GC1 Reduces Serum Lipids and Stimulates Steps of Reverse Cholesterol Transports in Euthyroids Mice. So these are mice with normal thyroid function. In this study, common strain C57BL6 mice received either 5.4, 24, 48, or 97 nanomoles T3 or GC1 per 1 kilogram of body weight by interperitoneal injection daily and were fed a normal diet. So that's a little bit closer. Normal mice and a normal diet, a little bit closer to what we would generally do as human beings. Another group received 97 nanomoles T3 or GC1 per 1 kilogram of body weight by interperitoneal injection daily and were fed a high cholesterol or high fat diet for six weeks consecutively. To analyze bile acid secretion, the last group received 48 nanomoles T3 or GC1 per 1 kilogram of body weight by interperitoneal injection daily for only five days, and they were fed a normal diet as well.